Hello my YouTube friends. I like to have fun in my live streams. I do a lot of custom alerts, sound effects, and changing scenes to make things more interactive for my audience. Today, I wanna to show you how to create this scene and this scene using a simple plugin in OBS. Oh, and by the way, it's totally free. So let's get to it. My analytics say that 80% of the folks watching my content are not subscribed. Am I doing something wrong? If so, let me know in the comments. But if you are looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. There are a couple of steps to setting up each scene, but they're easy enough if you follow along. In step one, I'm gonna show you how to install the shader filter plugin we're gonna use for all these effects. In step two, we're gonna be creating the thank you heart scene. In step three, we're gonna create the hell no scene. In step four, I'm gonna talk about how I use these scenes in my live streams to add more audience interaction and fun. Easy enough, right? Let's install Shader Filter. The link is in the description. Here we are on the web page, and I just click go to download. And next, I'm going to go ahead and save the file. We hop on over into File Manager, and I just double click on the File Manager Shader Filter zip file, and I'm gonna open up that first folder, and I'm gonna copy out the Data and OBS Plugins folder. Now you're gonna copy this in your OBS directory. Most times it's gonna be in program files. Mine is actually located somewhere different right here, OBS-Studio. I'm gonna select that, right click and click paste. And since I have it already on here, I'm gonna go ahead and replace those files and it's gonna stop me here because I'm actually running OBS. So I'll just skip that, but you shouldn't run into any of those problems. Shader filter is fully installed. Sweet. Now we can have some fun. There is a heart overlay I use for this video that I do show you how to make right here. But there also is a link in the description if you just want to download it. First thing I'm going to do is rename the default scene here. And I'm going to call this N camera. And the N stands for nested. You really want to put your camera in a nested scene. And the reason is because you can actually adjust the filters and set up the camera exactly how you want it. And then just put that scene in any other scene. And it's just perfect. It's always the same. You don't have to worry about modifying it for any of the locations. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to go under sources and we're going to click that plus and I'm going to go to video capture device. I'm just going to rename this to camera and click OK. I'm going to select my cam link and we're going to make it custom and 1920 by 1080. And I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to use a custom audio device. Select the microphone on the camera, which is this cam link one and click OK. And there we go. So now we have our microphone in there and our camera is set up. Next, I'm going to go ahead and click the plus under scenes and we're going to add the main scene so I can show you how to use this nested camera. I'm going to click the plus under sources in main and I'm going to go to scenes and I'm just going to add that nested camera. And there you go. So anything that you did to that camera under that nested scene, that's exactly how it's going to appear here. It's awesome. So how are we going to use this to create our jump scenes? Well, I'm going to click the plus under scenes and we're going to create a thank you scene click OK. Then I'm going to move thank you up above our nested camera scene. Then under sources, I'm going to click the plus and I'm going to go to source mirror. Now source mirror is not going to show up under your sources unless you installed shader filter properly. So if you don't see it, you don't have shader filter on your machine properly. So go back to the part where we install shader filter and check that out. And I'm going to rename this source mirror. I'm going to call this one hearts and click OK and I'm gonna select the source. In this case, we wanna use the camera scene, N-camera, our nested camera scene. We can enable that audio as well and click OK. And I'm gonna turn on the microphone. <laughs> there we go. Now we can hear it. Now we have this hearts volume and that's just the volume for the hearts scene. I'm gonna go ahead and hide that because there is no volume. Then I'm gonna right click on hearts and go to filters. I'm gonna click that plus under effect filters and go and select color grading. Then what I'm gonna do is adjust the red on each one of these little segments to give us a little bit of a red tint. And you really don't need to move these a whole heck of a lot. And you can tell that if you just adjusted the first one, you might be fine. It depends what kind of look you're going for. I kind of like to adjust each one of the reds up just a touch. And then we can adjust the saturation. You can see we can go from really red to basically black and white. And I'm gonna bump this up just a bit. 
and then we can adjust the lightness and the contrast and this is all about your personal preference whatever you kind of want for your look if we scroll down, there are also some advanced settings here that you can play around with if you want. Whatever the look you're going for. And once you have it, we can click close and there you go. Now we see it. So the next thing we're gonna do is click that plus again and we're gonna go and add a media source. And this is gonna be that hearts thing I was telling you about. And I'm gonna load the file and just browse to the actual folder where I have this little video. And there we go. Click open and select loop. And then I'm going to click OK. And there we go. Now our hearts are falling. The next thing I'm going to do is right click on our hearts and go to copy. Then I'm going to right click on the box and click paste referenced. Now we have two of the hearts videos in here. I'm just going to drag this all the way over to the right and beyond. So it reverses. I'm going to pull it up into the window and then just resize it. There we go. Looking good. One more thing we want to do is actually use that shader filter. So I'm going to right click on hearts and select filters. Then in effect filters, I'm going to click the plus and go to user defined shader. And we're going to call this one glow and I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to select load shader from text file and click browse. We're going to go down and select glow and I'm just going to click open. And then I'm going to select use slider inputs. Now you can just adjust the numbers if you want, but the slider inputs kind of make it a little bit easier. And then I'm just gonna go down here and play with these settings until I get the look I'm looking for. Now the nice thing about the glow is there are all kinds of different settings that you can use. And then at the very bottom, you see pulse speed. So you can pulse it between the settings that you're setting now and normal to give it kind of this glowy little strange effect. I kind of like it, but you do really kind of have to mess with these dials to get the look that you're looking for. And all this is just your personal preference, whatever look you're kind of going for. So once you find what you want, all you have to do is click close and we're all set. There we go. That is our thank you scene. Easy, right? Now let's do the other one. I really love this scene. It's a lot of fun. We're going to click the plus under scenes and we're going to call this one hell no. And I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to click the plus under sources and we're going to go ahead to our source mirror once again. And I'm going to call this one hell and click OK. We can enable audio if we want to. And we're just going to select that nested camera scene as our source and click OK. And I'm just going to right click on the scene audio and hide it since we don't need it. Then I'm gonna right click on our source mirror and select filters. And I'm gonna click the plus down here in the bottom left under effect filters. And I'm gonna select color grading. And I'm just going to adjust the red and the green a little bit under lift and gamma and pretty much all of the different things that you can control. And what I'm really kind of going for here is a little bit of a rusty orange tint to the things that are in my background. So adding a little bit of red and a little bit of green will really bring out that kind of orange orangish rusty tint to the background and I think it looks really cool it really works well with this scene we can also go in here and adjust our saturation to make us a little more red and I'm just gonna do some final adjustments and like I said on the other one this is all to your taste whatever looks good for you whatever adds the best effect to the scene or whatever look you're going for that's what you kind of want to do here so I'm gonna click the plus down here in the bottom left again, I'm going to select user defined shader and I'm going to call this one embers and click OK. And this time we definitely want to use this effect file and we're going to load the shader text from a file. We'll click browse and we're going to go down and we're going to find the embers effect and click open. And this one is really, really cool. Now I'm going to select use slider inputs. And what I'm going to do is just go down here and I'm going to lower my alpha percentage. And here's the thing. You can adjust all the settings on here if you like. I just want a little bit of that smoke at the top, but I want to make it mostly opaque so you can see through it and just see the embers. And that looks absolutely fantastic. So then I'm going to right click, go to filters, click that plus and select user defined shader again. And this time we're going to call this one fire and I'm going to click OK. And we're going to select use effect file and load shader from file, then browse. And I'm going to select the fire three effect. If you select the other fire one, you're pretty much guaranteed to lock up your OBS. 
So just keep that in mind and select the right one. And you can see this puts a really cool fire effect here on the bottom of the screen. So I'm gonna scroll down and check use slider inputs. And once again, I'm just going to adjust that alpha percentage. I want this to be mostly opaque so we can just kind of see through it. And so now we've got that flame on the bottom, a little bit of smoke on the top and lots of cool embers going up. The last thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and mute our camera right here and turn it all the way down. And I'm going to go ahead and right click and add my actual microphone into the scene. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I wanna be able to modify the audio on that microphone. So I'm just gonna select my cam link and click okay. So there we go, now we have my microphone added in here. I'm gonna go into advanced audio properties and I'm going to go ahead and select monitor and output so I can hear it since we're going to be adjusting the voice on here. Then I'm gonna click close and I'm gonna right click on the audio input capture and I'm going to select filters and I'm gonna click the plus and I'm going to select the VST2 plugin now, I did a video on how to do this to use voice changers. And if you haven't seen it, there is a link up in the top right hand corner. So you can check that out if you want to add a voice to one of these scenes as well. Next, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop this down and select G form and I'm going to open the plugin interface. I'm going to adjust the pitch and the format. Then I'm going to tweak it. I'm going to turn our minimum all the way down and our maximum all the way up. And then I'm gonna just finely tune adjusting the pitch here. And obviously I'm talking and listening while I do this. And you can use gate to turn the gain up a little bit so you can hear it better. And once you have all these settings exactly the way you want them, you can close all this out. And there we go. That's the full effect. Now this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many epic scenes you can create. To use these, you can set them up to voice command like I show in this video right here. I use the heart as a thank you when I get a super chat or a donation or something interesting comes in in the chat. You can have different reaction scenes for nearly anything. As chat reaction, you can have one for all kinds of different scenarios depending upon what you stream about. In a future video, I'm going to show you how to set up alerts that can trigger some scene changes for donations or subscribers or super chats. So you want to be sure to subscribe so you're notified when that one comes out. And if you want to see how to change these scenes with voice commands, you should check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.